Good afternoon, Wex YouTube people. Um, I'm Stuart Dennis. Uh, I'm one of the pro video specialists here at Wex. Um, if you've been watching our channel, you will have seen over the last couple of months, we've been doing some, um, basically some one-to-ones really with, uh, with some filmmakers and shooters. Uh, and this afternoon, I'm really excited to welcome Julie Ritson. Hi, Julie. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. Uh, so uh, I've got Julie's website up at the, um, in the background there, and you can see that uh, Julie is described there as an award-winning camera woman, editor and journalist. Um, uh, Julie works for the BBC, um, and um, you're a, 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 a camera journalist, um, and you've been doing this for some time. I thought what we could do first is show your showreel, and then we can get a quick introduction to you. Yeah. Um, so all the guys who are watch, uh, watching this, remember that I am apparently in control today when it comes to the sharing of screens and the playing of footage, and I'm not very good at this part. So you'll have to forgive me if I get anything wrong. Um, I will try to do my best. Um, so let me just stop this. Let me then press this button here and press this. Cool. So I'm going to play Julie's showreel and then we'll um, have a chat about your work, Julie. Cool? Okay. Cool. Cool. just over there is probably the closest Taliban firing point to this checkpoint. It's only about 200 metres away. The Northern Alliance troops on this front line say they are now ready to launch an all-out attack on their Taliban enemy. Here, the spirit is raucous and full of life and, you know, it's just wonderful. This is a sauropod. That's one of the long-necked, long-tailed dinosaurs, the barrel body and the tiny head. We enjoyed the images yesterday at right? Windsor driven around by the Duke of Edinburgh, which is a, a courageous thing to do. <laughs> we've just heard an explosion in the distance. This is now the first time we've had to come down here for cover into the bunker. I used to be the only Western journalist here. What a treat to be working with a camera woman. Fantastic. Let me um, stop sharing that screen and go back to your website. Um, cool. Julie, that really gave us a sense of the type of news that you shoot and the fact that it's so varied um, and takes you to some um, very different places. Um, tell us a bit about yourself and how you got into um, working in, in television news. Well, I went to film school um, in Manchester and in uh, 1988, um, I actually uh, had been going into the BBC on a sort of just in the summer holidays and uh, they offered me a, a one month tryout in their uh, in their editing department. So um, I did that and just one thing led to another. And before I knew it, I was in the editing department work, working as an editor. Uh, a few years in Manchester, I then moved to London and started working as an editor in London. And then the, uh, in the early 90s, the BBC started a whole um, multi-skilling uh, sort of push. So then I trained up in, on the camera side. So I hadn't initially I thought I was going to go to uh, art school, but I think I thought, well, I'm not really sure I'm a good enough artist to make a living at it. And and I thought, well, with at least with, with uh, getting into sort of, film work or, or the TV side of things, it would be um, it would be a way of being more creative, but also be quite an interesting life and, and lots of travel, which I enjoy. So that was sort of how, how I ended up getting into it, really. Right. OK, so 
was the news side of, of television something you were interested in to start with? Um, you mentioned obviously uh, that you wanted to, you thought you'd be an art student. Um, news and documentary is very reality based. Um, uh, is um, was that something you were, you were always interested in? Or was no, it... I, 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 no, I, I, it wasn't originally. I actually, when I went to film school, I thought I was going to be a, a film producer, but <laughs> but then it, it quickly became obvious that that was maybe not for me is creatively in, uh, enjoyable, you know, it was, yeah. so, um, so then I suppose I, 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 you know, I actually, when I joined BBC Manchester, um, I was working in an edit suite that was doing documentaries like Brass Tax. Um, I worked on various long form documentaries. So I wasn't in news originally, um, but what happened was after three years working there, um, I was still contract and I wasn't, um, they weren't sure if they was going to have any uh, more work. So I had to apply for other jobs. And it so happened uh, an editing job down in London came up with the news department. So I sort of fell into it a little bit, but I, I, I don't have any regrets. I really enjoy it. And it is so varied and I've seen the world and you get to meet so many interesting people. So actually, in a way, it's worked out quite well. Right. The, the um you said that you started off as an editor. Does starting off as an editor teach you about the the, the construction of a story for a, a news piece first and foremost? Is it, is it helpful to have started there, going into the camera work side of things? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I I learned I learned how to construct sequences with other people's footage you know, very early on in my career, and that has absolutely held me in good stead. And 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 actually in the early 90s when a lot of when the multi-skilling thing came in with the BBC a lot of editors made the move into camera work uh, you know almost slightly more successfully than the other way around because a we had the speed up you know the deadline bit with news is that editing for a deadline of the six o'clock news so we already had the speed in the editing we already knew what shots we needed in you know to construct a package uh, a sequence and so yeah and and so it made also the filming side of it much quicker as well right so it must have been although um uh although it must have been really helpful to have had that behind you in terms of the speed of the editing uh, if we're talking 90s, cameras for news gathering, um, and ENG, as we say, um, uh, in, in camera world, um, they're quite big, quite heavy cameras. Um, and I think that leads us quite nicely into the kind of kit that you actually use these days for that type of work. Um, so just um, for all the guys watching, uh, Judy, what, what are you shooting news on at the moment? And it's probably a wide variety, but it'd be good to get an insight into, into what kind of kit you're using. Yeah, so uh, just in the last year, I, I, I've handed back my big shoulder mount that I have used for many years, and you'll see in all those photos. That was, um, the most recent was a PMW 500. I handed that back and I've been, because I've been part of um, uh, 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 um, a, a process of assessing some cameras and also um, uh, uh, using uh, lots of variety of different cameras. And I've been using a, a Sony Z280 um, sort of pretty much solidly now for, for a couple of years. And so that's my, uh, that's my main ENG camera. And then I also have um, a, a Sony A7S Mark III, which I've only just recently got, but that I was using mirrorless anyway before that. But now I've got, I've been assigned this camera. And, and both, you know, are used for very different um, uh, um, um, uses. I mean, I've, I've got, if, if I'm doing a run and gun on the day, news piece then our, the Z280 is perfect because it, it's you know it's straight out of the camera what you shoot is what you get whereas the A7 you can be a lot more creative you can you know you can um, you, you're not you're not stuck with a fixed lens you can use primes you can st start to be you know get a bit more of a, a cinematic look with that camera and we use obviously GoPros and mm -hmm. I use Insta360 my yeah. iPhone occasionally so you know there are a multitude of cameras now out there so it is a mixed economy much more than it ever used to be you know years ago just the pmw or the one you know the the, the um uh, sx cameras before that and and everything shrunk because obviously now i had it on the laptop and it used yeah. to be two big flight cases and another box with the controller for tape you know i mean it was just a lot of kit has been condensed down into a much more size which is really good 
So um, you mentioned that that range of cameras there. I see quite a lot of drone shots in news these days as well. Yeah, yeah, um, drones, uh, yeah. You're a drone pilot. Uh, I am, yes. Yeah, drone, yeah, yeah. One of many qualified uh, drone pilots in my department. Um, uh, there, I mean, the, the, it, it's 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 difficult actually because we, we do use we do use drones a lot, but you know, actually, when there's like sixty people who are qualified drone pilots it's difficult for all of us to get in, you know to use it all the time so yeah. I'm quite often having to just sort of uh, keep my hours up as it were on Richmond in Richmond Park at their flying uh, field yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah but drones absolutely very important part of what we do um, and, and are used regularly as well. So just uh, for, for the guys watching, um, just uh, you, you've mentioned uh, that obviously your Z280, which is for anyone who isn't familiar with it, it's a fixed lens camcorder with a one inch sensor. It kind of, if you're old school like me, it's like the old EX3 from years ago or the EX, uh, EX1, uh, but it shoots in a broadcast format. Uh, that's what you use for your run and gun. Um, you'd use your A7 for more creative type pieces. Um, and wh wh where um, in, in news do you find the run and gun days and the more creative pieces. If you describe what the uh, what it would be like um, when you go out and shoot something for the news, how that decision takes place. Is it to do with the type of story that you're telling? Yeah, very much so. And, you know, I mean, something will be identified early on in the planning as being um, a feature, you know, the, the, the producer and correspondent will have worked on that for a period of time. And the most more crucial point is that they will have allowed a few days for, to do the filming and then a few more days to do the editing. So it's done over a much longer period. So you have time to, to properly, you know, film stuff creatively, you know, sort of um, uh, spend time with the, the participants that you're filming uh, and get, you know, a good range of, of uh, footage. With news, with on the day, completely different, you know, mm -hmm. kettle of fish, you can, you know, night before you might get a call, oh, we need to go up to wherever to do um, a, 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 an on the day story for the six the next day. Mm -hmm. um, for the last, since last May to la the end of February, I was working on the education brief with uh, Bramwyn Jeffries, our education editor. So her and I were often you know, in, in lockdown, we were heading up to schools that were, you know, trying to sort of uh, uh, sort of deal with, um, you know, sort of they had key worker pupils in the rooms and they, they were trying to keep operational. But we were filming. So we'd turn up at, at eight o'clock in the morning, film all day till about three. And then often we'd edit on location. So about three o'clock, that would generally be my cutoff point. And I'd say, like, you know, right, you know, we'd aim to get everything filmed by that point. Yep. And then I'd uh, we'd find a classroom and I'd often be sat down on a very little dinky little chair with my laptop and uh, start editing. For the, and, uh, and then, yeah, and then everything's fed over the Internet. Uh, so by about 530, hope, hopefully the package is done and uh, and I'm I'm uh, exporting it from uh, I edit on Final Cut 10, export it from Final Cut 10 onto the laptop uh, desktop and then the BBC has their own uh, sort of apps for filing everything back into the into the building. Right. OK. You mentioned Final Cut 10 there. Um, I I remember back in the day when uh, BBC News was Final Cut 7. Um, Final Cut 10 obviously can do all the, the, the newer formats. Are you finding that that editing program to be extremely useful for what you do? Because I, I hear good things about quick turnaround work with uh, FCP 10. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we we all used Final Cut 7 for a long period as well. And then in, 90, in 2013, um, I was actually one of the trainers that, uh, that taught um, my, I, I sort of ran a course where we converted, my, where I helped convert my colleagues uh, from Final Cut 7 to 10. And it was, it was a completely different mindset because of the magnetic timeline. And it was, it, it, it did sort of, it was quite difficult for people to, to adjust. But I find now it, it's just second nature and it's very quick. Once you get around, once you get your head around the audio rolls and everything, very quick to edit uh, a news on there. Um, I, I, and actually, I think a lot of my colleagues are very happy um, using Final Cut, but we do use a, a mixture. I mean, I know a lot of people do use Premiere Adobe Premiere and others are using, uh, we use um, uh, 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 Q, Q Edit in, in the BBC as well. Some, some Avid, a little bit of Avid is being used in other parts of the building. It is a mix, but for on the road, on a laptop for us, uh, for the new, for on the, in the news gathering department, we're, we're using Final Cut 10. 
Right, okay. Um, you've mentioned the, the cameras. Uh, in terms of just, uh, this is really for my uh, interest, and I'm sure some of the guys watching are going to be interested in this as well. Uh, what kind of uh, kit goes with the cameras? Um, obviously, you've got your tripods. Do you take, you've mentioned your A7 um, and the fact that you can shoot more cinematically. Do you get into the world of gimbals um, and into the world of, uh, of sliders as well? Yep, absolutely. So we've got we've got um, a Rhino slider. We've got various um, uh, gimbals that we can use. Different manufacturing uh, manufacturers uh, gimbals that we can use with yep. with lots of different cameras. All bookable. Um, some crews have their own, but mostly we've got a, a, a set of bookable kit. Um, we do have a, a, an area in the BBC production stores that that rent out all this stuff as well. So not everybody's got these all of this the, the, the accessories. Um, actually assigned to them, but we we have access to all of all of what we need. Um, and then uh, the, the the basics that we do have with the cameras are, as you say, um, a, a set of lights, um, the, the tripod, uh, a, a monopod with the Z2A TV issue, a monopod because we find that works quite well as well with that. Yeah. Um, and uh, and obviously radio mics, you know, and th that's been kind of crucial during COVID because everything's been on a boom <laughs> with a, yeah. a, ra a radio transmitter at the far end. Uh, uh, so yeah, that the, the radio mics have, have really been, you know, almost like a, a crucial part of the kit uh, re more recently. Cool. So it's quite quite a lot of kit, but I would imagine these days that's much smaller than it would have been. Oh, absolutely. Today. Yeah. I think we're, we're going to come on to some of your uh, some of the well, just the the, ev the evolution of, of the kit that's been, that's been out there. But before we get to that, we've just spoken about some of the practicalities of shooting around the cameras. The the realities of actually shooting news and being witness to actual um, world events. Um, what sort of um, what does it take? I guess is the question uh, to to shoot what you shoot. And what do you have to bear in mind when you shoot what you shoot? Yeah, I mean, you do end up um, in some quite difficult and upsetting situations. So, you know, there is there's an element of, you know, half of you, you know, you do have to, you, you know, half of you really wants to bring these stories to the attention of, of people, you know, people watching at home. So you are sort of driven by by that primary aim that we're, we're all wanting to get these stories out and, and shown to the world but it does then put you um, in in quite it, it, you know quite deep into that situation and story where quite often it's very upsetting or very dangerous um, I mean I, I, I've been to Afghanistan many times I've done 12 military embeds and you know there's all of them are, 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 are they're never easy they're always quite difficult um, but one of the last ones I did in 2011, um, there was an incident where um, a, a, a minibus was blown up very close um, to, to us. And, you know, lots of women and children were killed. And unfortunately, it was just it was just awful scene. And I just remember thinking, you know, I, I really don't want to do this anymore because it's it's starting. You know, you have to you have to think about protecting your mental health as well. It's quite important, mm -hmm. and recognizing when maybe you've reached your limit, um, and and that's it's 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 important to do that. But having said that, it, it, you know, people can find themselves in situations that 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 very suddenly, and and there's nothing they can do about it. That's the thing with news, things change so quickly. If you're in a war zone, um, we get training, obviously we get, we, we, we do the um, hostile environments training course, which pre prepares us quite well mm -hmm. and sort of gives us an insight into what we should expect. So it, 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 it that's, those are really incredibly useful and I'm actually going on another one next month. But um, yeah, I, it, it can be very difficult and you do have to, you know, there's an element of having to have a bit of a thick skin, actually, and be able to yeah. cope with environment, you know, be, you know, it's a lot of, you can be quite uncomfortable, you can be traveling for hours, you know, you know, bumping along roads, you just, you know, you have to just be able to sort of tough it out a bit as well, you know, um, there is an element of being, um, I suppose, you have to sort of tap into your internal adventurer, <laughs> I would say. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a nice way of putting it. Um... Being away for so long um, on uh, on these embeds as you had here, that must start to take its toll on the, the relationships that you have with other people, and it must be something that people 
wanting to go into television news must have to consider carefully that there might be times when you're away for a long time. Yeah, I mean, you know, you do end up missing out on a lot of things that, that, that are going on at home. And, you know, I know a lot of my colleagues, you know, they miss kids' birthdays and, you know, big events that, that you know, many others would always be there for you know it, it, it is really hard it's hard on 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 family life it's hard on relationships it's hard on friendships it's, it's you know it it, it, it is tough because you are away you know quite often for long periods of time and um and so yeah I, I think that is it is it is one of the harder elements of this job um just being able to sort of um keep a balance really between the mm. work and the home life. In terms of recent events, um, if we look at COVID as an example, how's that changed your working practices and have you been able to continue shooting throughout this whole period successfully? Yeah, I mean, we have definitely had to keep going because, you know, the news has got to stay on air. We, we've all been out there, everybody, you know, Early on, we were doing a lot of um, remote editing, and that is still the case. You know, I, I can sit in my lounge and edit for the six o'clock news, mm -hmm. um, just doing it remotely. I've, if I've gone out and, and, and filmed it the day before or whatever, I've done that a few times. So we have adapted um, a lot more Zoom interviews. You would have seen that, although I think we're trying to pull back on that now. But people are, are, are now things are opening up. It's getting a bit easier. But yeah, back, back in, in when it you know when we were in lockdown uh, the first time and during the second time during this winter you do end up um having to you know having to to, to just you know just being inside a, a, inside a, i mean i couldn't actually film inside some of the classrooms i had to film from the doorway and things like that it was incredibly difficult to to, to get uh get any footage quite often um and so that was quite hard and i know a lot of my colleagues have had similar you know, just just the, the physicality of not being able to get close to, you know, sure. the people you're filming uh, is quite hard. Absolutely. And um, and then, you know, just the, the, the logistics of getting around and, and uh, you know, hotels. I mean, I, I was able to stay in a hotel if I went if I was traveling around the UK. But, you know, there was no facilities. It was just a room uh, and that was it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it was, it, you know, it, it, we adapted, but it wasn't easy. But I think everybody sort of got used to it now. How many people are on a, are on a crew, on a, on a news crew? I'm just thinking about, um, obviously, with the COVID question to do with social distancing, but just for, for, for the guys watching, how many people make up a, a news crew? Well, during, the, during COVID, we have had to keep it much lower. So often it would be just me and I'd be doing all the technical mostly and then uh, the, the correspondent. So and they would often do the sort of do the radio recording and often the uh, the um, uh, the radio editing as well. Then the producer who would usually in normal times have come out on the road as well. They were often they were often staying at home and and organ they would be doing the logistics from home um, and you know and keeping in contact with us. Uh, on location and both myself and the correspondent would have to travel to the lo location separately in our own cars because we weren't allowed you know to have uh only one person in the car at a time uh due to the covid restrictions so yeah there's been quite a lot of you know so we, the crews have shrunk we've had to, you have to try and keep a, a minimum number of people uh in the team now but normally it would be a producer correspondent and a report um uh, sorry a, a camera crew uh, reporter and um, a producer but when I went to these military embeds again it was just me and a correspondent because it, right. it, the, the, mili the military wanted us to be a small team yeah okay so that would so uh, something like an embed would have been a lot of physical work as well uh, yeah. to, uh, lugging the kit around um, uh, pretty much on your own uh, with your, well, with your yeah, report. I mean, you know, luckily, when you're in an embed, you're quite often you'll, you'll see in that picture, you can see um, you can see a couple of armoured vehicles. And yeah. and, and often uh, we were uh, that that white one with the TV on, that's our own armoured vehicle. And, and often, you know, if with a, a military embed, I'd be maybe traveling around in um, in those or in a, a, a Mastiff or, you know, other vehicles. So 
you did have transport and actually, you know, the, 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 the soldiers themselves were pretty good about, you know, just yeah. you know, putting things in and out for you, uh, the tripod and what have you. I mean, I, I would actually try and travel very light anyway. I mean, mostly it was just a, a rucksack with my, my mics and, and spare batteries yeah. and the camera and the tripod might go in, in the vehicle, but it would probably not really get used much. Um, uh, only, only for, you know, a few occasions. Yeah. So, yeah. So if if um, if we were to think about uh, these images here with your with what would be a shoulder mounted camera, you've mentioned that you've got the Z two eighty uh, that you use. Um, do you use that handheld, or do you have like a shoulder mount for that system? Yeah, so we have a variety. But what what I uh, part of my uh, job in the last few years has been actually. Um, is been developing the, the 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 sort of accessories range for this the Z280. So we have yeah. a, a monopod setup, which is the monopod with an attachment plate, and then a sort of um uh, we've actually it's actually a fishing rod holder that we've adapted, yeah. and so it works almost like a, a if people are familiar with steady gums, it works almost like that uh, in in the in the in so you can actually run around, and then also it drops to the floor uh, full length. Um, so we've got that; that's very good, but we all also have a rig that you can put on the shoulder with the arms and it's got the the, the um it's got a, a smart grip for the for the controls so it's it's we've tried to we've tried to throw in as, as many accessories into the uh, our kits as possible because a lot of our crews are coming off the 500 the the pmw 500 and have been used to having a camera on their shoulder for a very long time and the muscle memory that is with that is quite you mustn't underestimate how hard it is to suddenly yeah. switch from a, a shoulder camera to uh, you know a, a much smaller camera so sure. to ease that process we have provided them with the option of a, of a, a shoulder rig okay cool so um this kind of leads me on to some questions about kit and i know um some people might uh find the kit side of things a bit a bit techy but um there are some uh, i think some interesting things to talk about um when it comes to the evolution of uh, the older kit that we're looking at in these pictures here to where we are now but not just within cameras um uh, i actually know uh, i know you julie from, from years ago when you rent lights from a company i used to work for um, we used to rent very large all weather um uh what were they hmi lights um that um that you could use uh, in, in all different weather conditions uh, they were big they were heavy they required a lot of power um we're not really in that world anymore um we now see a lot of led lights that were, we went through the the led panels and now we're starting to see some really good open face uh, heads as well so how's your lighting changed over those years yeah well firstly i mean the lighting yeah has got as you say, it's gone more LED, but also the cameras have helped because a lot of the cameras are so much better in lower light that you almost mm -hmm. don't need much lighting anymore, which has really helped us in, in, in the new sort of field of work. So that's, you know, so that's um, one benefit. But obviously we do still um, we do still uh, have, you know, two, two cam, you know, big sit down interviews that we we throw all the lights at and we will we'll, that that'll be a mixture of, you know, of hard lights and LEDs and, and, and soft lights, um, uh, lots of scrim. I mean, we'll 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 sort of those are big set down interviews that we'll we will bring in a lot of lighting for. But then other times it's just a little little LED top light yeah. um, at the most. So it, it, it has it has. Um, it, it, it has varied quite a lot. Before, with the bigger cameras, we, we almost needed a top light on all the time in low light, but now yeah. we can get away with it with these newer cameras. Right, okay. Just, um, and this is, a, this is a, gonna be a really boring question, really just from myself. Uh, what kind of profiles do you shoot when you're shooting news? I take it you guys don't shoot log? Um, no, or no, no. Just we, shoot... Yeah, I mean, we can, yeah. I mean, both cameras, both, both the Z280 and the A7S can shoot log, but yeah, I mean, we, we have to, you know, unless it's a specific project that has time that somebody's working on that's over a period of time and is then going to be, um, you know, part of a, a, a bigger feature, then possibly log can be used. But we, we have to know that what we're shooting can literally come out of the camera. You can hand that card to a producer and they go and ingest it into the system and it gets edited yep. and straight on air. So we, we can't go down that route um, of, of, of log, yeah. So, you know, we're, we're, we shoot 
you know, and, and even hate in, in even 4K, we can't actually transmit 4K. So if we shoot anything in 4K, we have to down convert it on the Final Cut 10 uh, into just uh, into just HD and, and then we, we, we output it that way. Do you shoot much 4K uh, as an acquisition well, format in, um, in, in this? No, well, like I say, what, what, what happens is, again, if you are working on a, 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 a bespoke piece that, that you are then going to edit on your own, you know, if I know I'm going to shoot something and then I, I'm going to edit it on my laptop, I might shoot in 4K, say, for example, say there's two people and we're doing an interview yep. um, and, I, and I might have them sat side by side you, or, or you I'm just doing a straight interview and I will shoot it wide and in, in, in 4K knowing I can I can crop it really easily. So that is a very common thing that we the way that we work if we know we're editing yeah. ourselves. If if it, if if it's going to be handed out of the camera to a producer to hand, you know, to or, or has to be fed straight into the system, we can't go with 4K. Because uh, our, our internal system uh, doesn't do 4K at the moment, um, and we don't transmit in 4K uh, uh, on news. So, um, so yeah. So that's that's. So we can use it, but not uh, direct to, to, to TX. Right. Okay. Um, speaking of uh, of broadcast, um, one of the things we'd spoken about in rehearsals was basically uh, the 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 growing the changing way in which people consume the news um so um most of the reports that you've been talking about are going out on a, a broadcast they, they're, they're being broadcast at either six o'clock or ten o'clock a lot of people are uh, consuming their news in more bite-sized chunks whether that's through social media the likes of tiktok etc how much does that influence the type of aesthetic and edit that you go for when you shoot news or does it stay quite traditional still no this is this is actually the 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 the, the, the sort of challenge that we have at the moment um, within news is that when I go on a, on a, when I go filming, I am trying to also not just think about what I need for the traditional news piece for the six, but I'm also trying to shoot something a little bit different. Same location, same, same participant, same story, but in a slightly different, you know, a little bit more, you know, sort of fun way mm. and creative way that would be used for, uh, a digital piece so and, and often what will happen is I'll I'll shoot everything as well as a, a slightly more creative stuff for the digital and then that will get edited um, by someone else by an, a, 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 an editor at base if I don't have time to do it you know if, if I'm if I'm doing it on the day I won't have time to do it if it's a, a, a bigger feature then I will, and I and, and I, I did a I did a trip actually fantastic trip out to Wyoming to film dinosaur bones. You probably saw a clip of it in yeah, that sure. in my sure. my film. And um, I had I had it was a four five day trip, but when I got back, I had almost two two weeks editing it almost because um, I had all the various versions to do. I had the you know the, the TV packages, the digital packages. I had a package for uh, YouTube, um, uh, various radio. Pack you know, it, there were a lot of different. I think thirteen different versions in the end, and all with the diff different sort of screen sizes, vertical, yeah. and so on. So yeah, yeah, I mean, we 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 do have to do that, but it's quite challenging when you're trying to you know sometimes digital stories are just commissioned as digital stories and and that works yeah. and and then what happens is they get seen as a digital story and then they end up actually being converted into a tv package so quite often it's the other way around as well and that's happening more and more but it is it is it is the, the one of the hardest things that we're trying to sort of grapple with at the moment is 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 the whole yeah. not trying to duplicate filming and make twice the work for ourselves in producing you know footage for the for the traditional sort of uh, um, uh, tv packet uh, uh, online uh, tv bulletins and then obviously coverage for the uh, online packages so that, that's fascinating so that the online packages that we see they're not truncated versions of the broadcast they're actually no different. no not at all i mean quite a lot of yeah, them are yeah. actually commissioned as digital packages absolutely and what what um, what uh, what would you say the key differences are when it comes to approaching one of uh, uh, the broadcast or or the online version when it comes to say shooting style and editing is there is there a big difference between the two? Yeah, absolutely. The the a, a digital piece will most likely not have a reporter's voice on it, so you often right. need the participant 
the person you're filming or, or to, to take the to, to, to drive the narrative. So quite often you will start off yeah. with seeing them them introducing themselves and 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 you know and and their story so it's often what we call author it's sort of an authored piece as in it's the participant that, that mm -hmm. the story is about who is actually uh driving this sort of the the editorial on it um right. so you you know you so where they might have been an interview in a tv package they'll suddenly be moved right up the top and they'll be, you know, the, you know, and you've probably seen quite often they're looking straight down the barrel and they're, they're, they're being, yep. uh, and there's maybe text introducing them, explaining, and then you'll hear their voiceover and then you'll see them in vision. The, the, it, it, there's a lot of different ways it's done. And, and actually, you know, quite often it's quite difficult to, it, it can be quite subjective to individuals what looks good and what doesn't look good as a digital package. So that, that can be yep. quite tricky. Um, but yeah, so you, you are, you know, it, it's, it is a, a very different way of, um, of, of approaching it, filming it and editing it. And you can be a little bit, as, you, know, as a, you can be a bit more creative with the editing and a bit quicker and, you know, they're, they're really fun to do actually. Um, the, uh, as a shooter and, a, and an editor, is it, is it refreshing to be able to work on something that's got a, a different feel to it, um, as opposed to the, the traditional broadcast? Has, has that been exciting for you? Yes, it, it, it definitely helps to have a variety and mix things up and, and do a, do a mixture. I mean, I, I you know, I, 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 you know, like I say, I could be, I could be doing, um, I could be filming and I mean, good, a good, a good example was, uh, was the standing outside for four days in a, in a, a meter by meter square outside the hospital waiting for Prince George to be born. And I'm just really, I'm just doing live camera that to going out to Wyoming to film dinosaur bones. And, you know, the, the variety that you get in this job is amazing and meeting so many interesting people you know i mean i i've i have sh shaken the hand of president obama which was ex extremely exciting and 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 met you know you know movie stars and you know i met stephen hawkins and and all of these people that so that to me is one of the the, the great joys of the job fantastic I, I think the variety is what would make it very attractive yeah. for a lot of people yeah absolutely. um just um a, a, just, just a quick word again on the um, on the differences between the online and the broadcast. It was just something that, that we, were, we were talking about the other day, and that's um, I, I would say that documentary um, uh, shooting has become much more cinematic than it ever used to be. Uh, we're starting to see um, a real movie look to everyday documentaries. Is that is that is that desire for cinematic images and what we really mean by that is obviously a bit of shallow depth of field yeah, and yeah, and, um, yeah. and, um, and 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 maybe a bit of slow mo here and have some flares is that creeping into news as well yeah yeah it is it is i mean we that's partly what is driving the you know the 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 purchase for us of the a7s and 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 mm -hmm. being able to sort of i mean we have been using you know the you know the canon c300 um and and uh you know and the fs5 we've been using those for a few few years so we were able to get that sort of look but now we're also you know we're, we're go, you know with the, the mirrorless cameras are starting to really um come into their own for video um, and uh, and that is uh, you know you, you'll even see it on on standard news pieces um, you know you'll yep. see a more I mean I don't know if you caught any of Clive Myrie's uh, packages that were shot in the hospitals during uh, lockdown uh, one of our you know top cameramen that Davy McElveen who's won an RTS for that work he um, you know that that's all very cinematic shallow depth of field just allowing things to just cross you know move about not you know and, and just following I think it, um he 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 often just lets things just happen in the screen and if they go out of focus a little bit that's okay just make sure they bring it back in again so it, it, it's it is a it, it is a way that we are starting to you'll start to see more of it because we're getting the cameras that can do that into the hands of the crews who are working yeah. on these I, I think that um that those covid reports that you mentioned just then is really what I was I was actually uh, thinking of as as an example of of how uh, more sort of cinematic documentary style has found its way into these packages um, because it doesn't stop really with the uh, the aesthetic. The editing will have its own yeah. beat to it now that are much more um, not well. They're, they're matter of fact, but they, there's something more uh, human about it. Well, uh, um, 
the key difference, the key thing for those on those specific packages were they they were given time. They were given about you probably have noticed they were about four minutes, nearly yeah. five minutes long, rather than a standard two yeah. two minutes. So in you know when you've got that much time, but you know I mean it's not long in documentary standards but it's but for news and when you've got that longer time you're able to allow it to breathe a bit more yeah. you can you know you can actually you you edit it in a very different way to a news package and and the having that extra duration of time allows you to do that so that that's quite important so it does it does again add to that that feel a report like that would be shot over how many days just the one or is it no over- that that was um no, no, no. That was a, a several. That was probably around about ten days yeah. uh, of 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 being at the hospital every day. Just you know, because obviously they were just seeing what was happening and just following certain individuals, mm. doctors, nurses, and so on. So no, it was filmed over quite a a, a a long period for for a news package, and then it was you know probably about a week of editing because they did. I mean, it, it was a series of four uh, Monday, Tuesday, mm. Wednesday. You know, they ran them, and then it was a half hour. Uh, 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 the weekend on the news channel so um, yeah so that, that that sort of thing would get a bit more a bit more time uh, given to it and we yeah. are doing we are doing more of those I mean that that is something that that BBC News are trying to to do more of because I think they yeah. they, they, they are much more engaging you know for the viewer yeah. I think I think they're, they're certainly impactful as well I, 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 the, um, my last question on that on that subject is does the narrative kind of tell itself? Does it present itself in terms of how it all will fall together? Or do you have to come at it in a way with a kind of a program maker's eye um, to know where a beginning and a middle and an end would be and how to, to plot a story out like that? Or does, does news actually sort of tell itself? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it really varies. It, right. it will vary on the subject and what you, you know, I mean, with the hospital, they knew they'd already got permission to film with certain doctors and nurses. So it was a case of just following them around. And Clive would have had a, 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 an idea which he would have passed on to Davy as to how he roughly wanted to, you know, to, to, to sort of focus because they were doing like a, a, a number of different films. So they would have had slightly different focuses for each of those. Um, so there would have been an, an element of, of, of sort of, not planning, but an idea of what they were sort of after um, for each of those packages. But it does vary. I mean, sometimes you do just go into a situation, you have to just sort of let, let it happen, you know, yeah. and, and, and just sort of, and then once you've gathered all the footage, uh, then afterwards you think, right, how do we best present this? How do we edit this together? Right, okay. Um, I'm just gonna come on to um, some of your, um, your ideas around, um, around how um how your your job title is um is approached um it's because something we, that we, thorny we, subject <laughs> yeah that, that, that subject um you know um camera woman camera journalist mm-hmm. uh what, what are your thoughts and, and, and what is it you prefer to be called well for years um i i you know i i was i was quite happy to be called um a camera woman um yeah. or a camera crew um and you know, and for men, and there was a lot of discussion. I mean, it, 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 my career has been 33 years and for all, all my career, this has been discussed. Um, but the, the, it sort of reached a slight uh, peak uh, a, a year or two ago when um, camera crews were getting um, uh, name checks on the news. And often the men were getting referred to as cameramen, but then the women that were shooting, and we have quite a few of them in our department now, which is great. Um, they were being referred to as camera operators. <laughs> so it was like, oh, hang on a minute. Um, yeah. You know, we, we we do more than just operate the camera. It, you know, it's a very, you know, we are, we are, you know, we bring a lot more to the role. It's not just pushing buttons. So that's what that implied, that operator sort of title, I felt, and a lot of people did. Um, so there was a, you know, we have a WhatsApp group. There was a lot of discussion and uh, we felt that camera journalist was quite a good title because it is, you know, we do, we do, you know, get involved in the journalistic side. It is part of the role. We, we are encouraged to pitch, you know, story ideas and try and get them commissioned. And we, and we are, you know, we we're heavily involved with the, the correspondent and, and producers, um, certainly on the more, featurey stories about how you know about ideas for how to shoot things so we input into the stories in that way so that's kind of how the, the camera journalist sort of 
name came about. But it's it's you know it, it, I, I've never I've never been overly concerned about it. It's never really. I mean you know I, I, I've just always slightly laughed when people have come up to me and go um have sort of introduced me. Oh, this is our cameraman. I mean woman. I mean would you mind what I call you? You know, and it yeah. it is quite. <laughs> Just watching people struggle with that. Well, I, uh, I it's just like been that. it's been like the the the, the 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 regular thing throughout my career is watching people struggle with that name. I think uh, camera journalist. I, I I like I like it because it's um it, it's not gender specific. It feels more like it's describing the the fuller role uh, that that's you're talking it, about. Um, that's as, exactly right. So that's I think what that's what I'm going to go with now because I've been told. So that's. Uh, <laughs> And everyone else who's watching should do the same, I think. Um, so um, I know that we've got some questions coming in. I'm going to get to those in just a moment. So if you are waiting for your questions to be asked, guys, then it's just that um, I need to uh, I need to read the questions and uh, work out how to do that with my uh, with my Zoom just here because I don't really know how that side of it works. Um, but before we do that, um, Julia, I just wanted to ask um, for any of the younger shooters that we that we deal with, and we get a lot of uh, a lot of students um, and a lot of um, budding uh, filmmakers uh, watching our YouTube um, uh, here. Is there any advice you have for those guys about how to get into the type of work that you do? Yeah, I mean, certainly it's not the same way I did because times have changed and it's very different. I think you do need to be um, a little bit more all round of an all rounder now. So the, 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 certainly in the news field, I think if you are able to, you know, shoot good pictures quickly, you know, you know your camera inside out and you can work it without really even thinking. So lots of practice on the camera um, and good audio. Make sure you, you, you know, you're always capturing good audio. But you do need to, you know, to have a journalistic sort of um, knowledge as well and be able to to do that side of it as well. Um, I know there are, I know there are, you know, on, on our local news in London, there are there are many, you know, there's a couple of uh, journalists on there who who I know shoot their own stuff. We have in national news, we have people who will go and do their own uh, their own um, filming and reporting, um, you know, that that whole role is uh, that whole way of do of doing the role is is because it's, it, it, it it, it, it doesn't work on everything. It doesn't work on late breaking stories on the day, you know, that's, but it, it, it is, if you want to break in as a starter, being able to, um, to, to show that you can be creative, you can film creatively quite dull, maybe quite dull subjects or dull environments that don't really look like anything, but you can make them look great. Then um, that's a real bonus. So, you know being able to prove you know offer ups and prove that you can do that and okay. then the journalistic side as well um yeah. i think that going forward that is how it's it's gonna it's gonna move forward now and, and i know a lot of the younger uh um uh, staff that we we now employ have a, a much wider range of skills across the two areas now than just a technical area yeah. okay that's well that, that's great advice i think that you mentioned there about how to make dull things look interesting. I think that that is the skill of a cinematographer, particularly in the UK, uh, just overall, because we don't yeah, have... Like, a, yeah. It's quite... Uh, not to be down on where we live, but it can be quite a drab place. Uh, and if you can make that drabness look interesting or make it look stylish or make it some, somehow just a bit more visually uh, enthralling than it was before, then you're halfway to, 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 to making okay. something interesting. I think that's what's driven the whole cinematic look because you know you can make things look so you know you can make something that's quite dull look really great yeah. with using those cinematic um, uh, 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 sort of looks and skills absolutely. Right, cool. So uh, I'm going to try and find these questions now. Um, Julie, can you just tell me if I if anything on your screen changes? Um, actually, no, it's not your screen. It will be the people who are. Well, I can pull up. I can pull up. I've pulled up the questions in front of me. If uh, if you want me to to read, um, right. uh, I've got one here from Kareem. Uh, are DSLR cameras such as uh, the Canon nine ninety D that film four K mm -hmm. content good for creating news packages for television? Well, the problem is that you know you, you, you can you can use those cameras but then if you're shooting in 4k certainly with the bbc they're not you, you know you can't transmit them straight to air 
Um, mm -hmm. But you can, yes. I mean, it, the, the, absolutely. They're, 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 um, uh, as long as you can get good audio into them, that's always the challenge with these uh, DSLR type cameras is yeah. getting good audio and, and two channel audio as well. Um, yeah. Quite tricky. Um, I, I would just uh, mention on that subject, obviously the, the 90B is, uh, can shoot HD as well. It is nice and small and compact and it's got yeah. lovely camera on it. So that will be helpful for people just trying to, yeah, trying to you've get got yeah, and you've got to think about the file sizes because, you yeah. know, 4K is a heavy, it's going to be a heavy file. It's a, you know, so if you cut, if you, you know, so it's not just about the shooting, it's about the editing and being able to, to have a, you know, ha, you know, have an edit platform that's going to be able to deal with those sort of file sizes for news when you're on a quick turnaround. You haven't got loads of time for rendering or anything. So that's, that's part of the issue as well. Yeah. Uh, I would just mention as well that if, if he is looking at a small camera for, um, for news gathering type purposes, and you want to stay, stick with something that's got uh, interchangeable lenses, um, I would actually look more towards uh, Sony and Panasonic. Uh, and the reason I would do that is that they have um, XLR adapters if you wanted to shoot with yeah. uh, mm -hmm. with dual channel audio. Um, so it will the, the, the cameras will basically be just more expandable uh, than what Canon do at the moment. Uh, Canon don't have that, although Canon make some fantastic handheld camcorders that have um uh, independent uh, uh, dual channel um, audio going into them but their uh, their their dslr mirrorless range doesn't quite have that um that kind of thing going on at the moment so that would be my advice there from yeah, from the yeah. side of things yeah yeah good point yeah yep. um so. are you able to see these now um Stuart? Uh, look. I'll go on to the next one. Duncan, obviously audio can be problematic. Um, how do you deal with situations where the audio isn't quite what you'd like it to be? <laughs> uh, well, um, the problem is if the audio is not very good, then we can't actually use the, the, the footage. That's the problem. So we have to kind of make sure that the audio is good. Uh, and, and that's why when I'm teaching, it's always monitor your audio make sure you know i see so i'm always ticking off you know people i'm teaching you know not putting their headphones on and not monitoring their audio you really need to make sure that that audio is is good from the get-go you know that's and yep. you know obviously with radio mics there can be interference but you'll spot that if you're if you're monitoring it so um my my, my advice would be always monitor your audio and and don't just assume because you can see the and the little, you know, uh, um, PPM, but not PPM anymore, but that you can see it, you can see the audio meters moving. Um, just that doesn't, ass don't assume that you are getting good audio just because you can see that bobbing up and down. Right. So there's a question from Andrew. Julie's uh, real world techniques and workflow are fascinating. Oh, that's, that's a compliment, that one. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll take that. Another yeah. question. <laughs> Uh, Karen says, um, how would, as a freelancer, you sell your work uh, to the media such as the BBC? Uh, you're actually part of the BBC, aren't you? So I am on staff. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I'm not really sure I have much uh, uh, experience. I haven't got any experience of, of how I would do that. I mean, we, we do use freelancers. Um, I mean, as for selling the work, I mean, you know, there are agencies out there, PA, Reuters and so on that we use. So yeah. that's one way of getting the footage in. Um, putting stuff on YouTube often or Twitter, yeah. um, you know, a, a lot of a lot of like, you know, the London bridge attacks, a lot of footage is I think somebody happened to be very close. Somebody was on a bus or so. And they put that on Twitter and all of the news, all of the, the broadcasters and, and agencies jumped onto Twitter and were like, yeah. can we get your access to your stuff? So there are, you know, there are a multitude of ways of getting footage into a broadcaster. Um, yeah. But so, yeah, uh, I, I don't have I, I don't have any proper real experience of that being staff. But I think it, it, it sounds like uh, just maximizing your exposure using social media and using yeah. things like YouTube are probably the best ways of starting those starting that journey off. Yeah, because, uh, you know, all our journalists are, are, are always following, you know, the, you know, in their subject areas, they're always following the, the, tw the Twitter trends and they're always, you know, looking at social media, looking at uh, what's on YouTube, we're looking across everything, you know, the whole gamut of, 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 of places that 
content can appear. So, you know, including TikTok, I know a lot of, you know, the younger younger reporters they they get a lot of um a lot of ideas of trends that are going on with younger people on tiktok and will yeah. reach out to people on there to, to to so yeah i mean absolutely you know just get your work out there really post it everywhere i think I, that, that's that's great advice and it goes for people uh, well more than people just looking at uh, shooting broadcast news and i would always say this to people and that's that be across the new types of media I know we might not all like it at times and we might not uh, like the way it's been shot or the way it's being presented, but these are, th this is the media and it's good to understand these things because it will, there will be some influence in there that you, that you can take that will be positive for you. Yeah. Um, so I, I'd always recommend that people try to do that. A mm -hmm. uh, question from Andrew, and I think the question, the way he's phrased it makes it sound like I think I know what his answer to this would be. Uh, <laughs> does Julie prefer working with the newer, smaller, lighter kit? Or miss the heft of a shoulder of shoulder carried ENG cameras. <laughs> I think um, the, the key word in there is heft. <laughs> heft. Yeah, I yeah. mean, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I have a bad back. I have a slip yeah. disc, and so I naturally I, I wanted to try and minimise any future uh, um, damage to my back. So I was very ready to embrace, you know, two years ago, three years ago, mm -hmm. a, a, a much lighter camera. So um, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm much, I, and I find now actually work, working with the Z280 or, or, or some of the smaller cameras, if you, you you don't feel so tired, of, you know, at the end of the day, if I'm working all day and then it's I don't feel quite so exhausted because, you know, with it, with the, the PMW 500, my goodness, I mean, with that on, your, especially when in war zone, you can imagine, I mean, I, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, not only am I wearing a flat jacket, I've got, you know, a massive camera on my shoulder and then I'm lugging the tripod, you know, it's, it's, it, it was, it, it, it is too much. And we are, and that's one of the drivers, you know, we've got a lot of crews of my age and older that have got bad backs and bad shoulders and, and, and it's done, you know, it has, we have to get you know we have to get you know we have to prioritize getting onto lighter cameras anyway i think so there has yeah. been a big drive for that with, with, with that in mind i know we don't have much time left but just do, do you see that um what's the future for the shoulder mounted eng camera well i mean um, we still have 500s we're still using them and, and you know that the, 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 but they're not supported by sony anymore so you know we have to, we, that's one of the drivers for us to look at other new ca newer cameras as well as the, the the them being lighter as well and the connectivity side of things we're, we're trying to start to do you know uh, uh, we're doing t t trials with connected cameras and being able mm -hmm. to um, you know, file up to the cloud and back down again and all, all that sort of stuff. So, you know, there's a lot of lot of um, reasons why we have gone with the lighter camera. But, you know, it, I, I do know that a lot, there are areas that there are there are some rental companies that are struggling to hire out the 500s now. And, and then and, and, you know, there are, you know, so I, I just I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's it's hard to say, but certainly not I'm, I'm just talking from a news perspective and not yeah. obviously documentaries and where the, the, you know the, 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 I, I, I have tried the um, the FX9 on my shoulder <laughs> especially if you've got the connect the the radio bit on the back yeah. whoa that's a big camera but but you know that's absolutely fine if you're for, for certain you know if you're doing documentary work or whatever then that's that's fair enough but in news you know you need to be a bit more agile I think that one of the issues that you have with going up in sensor size, if you look at something like an FX9, is the lenses start getting bigger again. Yeah, um, yeah. So, uh, it's, uh, that's not always necessary for the type of work that you're doing. Yeah. Uh, maybe in more feature doc type stuff, we might yeah, see that. Yeah, that. yeah I think you, you have to be careful. You, you know, you, you need a tool that's going to fit the job and do what you need it to do and, and no more really, anything more. And you're lugging around a bigger camera for no reason that you can't yeah. really utilise. Well, there's uh, one last question and then we've got to really wrap up uh, uh, Fletcher says do you record stereo or mono audio uh, more often is stereo ever used for news packages um, not so much now okay. uh, yeah we're mostly mono um, but then it, it is delivered in it, you know because we have split we do split audio on the camera so we're you know often it's top mic on on channel two and, and radio mic for the reporter's voice on, on, on or interviewees on on one um so yeah stereo is very difficult to 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 to, to, to record and then to handle in the right. edit um so no we don't okay. thank you cool okay that wraps up all the questions uh, and we are right at the end of the hour uh so julie i want to say massive thanks this was fascinating um okay. and everyone has said the same thing on all of the, the comments so um, so thank you ever so much for all of your insight.
Um, and um, thanks to everyone who joined us as well. Um, and uh, if you get any more questions, you can always just drop questions to me. At, it's a pro video at wex.co.uk. Um, that gets through to me. You can ask me about kit. You can ask me about workflows and we can talk about any of it, anything you want, really. Um, so, Julie, thanks ever so much. Um, My pleasure. And Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. Cool. Good stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye, everyone.